I just walked out of a movie that had one kaiju suplex another. This is the greatest movie ever made. Here are my immediate thoughts, the spoiler edition of Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. Godzilla x Kong is the latest in the MonsterVerse franchise directed by Adam Wingard. This includes Godzilla, Godzilla King of the Monsters, Kong Skull Island, and Godzilla vs. Kong. The movie stars Rebecca Hall, Kaylee Hoddle, Dan Stevens, and Brian Tyree Henry. The latest entry follows up the explosive showdown of Godzilla vs. Kong with an all-new cinematic adventure pitting the almighty Kong and the fearsome Godzilla against a colossal, undiscovered threat hidden within our world, challenging their very existence and our own. The epic new film will delve further into the histories of these titans, their origins, and the mysteries of Skull Island and beyond, while uncovering the mythic battle that helped forge these extraordinary beings and tied them to mankind forever. This is a spoiler review. There's going to be a few things that we're going to talk about here. Now, I do have my non-spoiler review already up, so if you want to check that out, you certainly can. But, unless you have not seen Godzilla vs. Kong, this is your last chance. Spoilers are coming now. But let's get into the plot first. So, Kong is still chilling out in Hollow Earth. There's a monarch outpost there. They're studying him, but really, he's free to kind of roam around and do his own thing. He's feeling lonely and isolated. He's thinking he's the last of his own species. While on the surface, Godzilla is taking care of other titans. One of the things that this movie does that's actually a little cute is in between taking care of titans, Godzilla will take naps in the Roman Colosseum. So I thought that was actually pretty cute. The monarch outpost gets a signal that Kong follows while at the same time Gia, played by Kaylee Hoddle, is starting to experience flashbacks and hallucinations and visions. And this is concerning her adoptive mother, played by Rebecca Hall. And if you remember Kaylee Hoddle, she's the deaf girl that had the connection with Kong. They signed together and everything like that. So her story actually parallels Kong in terms of her thinking she is the last of her kind and her tribe as well. Godzilla senses this signal as well and he gives no fucks. He goes straight to a nuclear power plant in France, obliterates it, and just absorbs its radiation. And it seems like it's gearing up, Godzilla is gearing up for a battle. He goes to the Arctic, he faces Tiamat, defeats that, and then goes and sucks up all of their energy and radiation. So it is clear that Godzilla is sensing something as well and is gearing up for a big battle. Does this movie deliver on the promise of a movie on an epic scale that's going to give you big, badass kaiju battles? Fuck yes. The film is littered with big, sprawling, epic fights between these titans. The first time we get to see Scar King, the big baddie, and he gets to throw that spine whip thing. It is super cool. And we see how what kind of damage it causes by ripping fur off. And the big, big reveal in this movie is not only that Scar King is the main baddie, but he also controls Shimu. And Shimu is one of the oldest and most powerful titans of them all. Shimu is basically the Negaverse version of Godzilla. So instead of shooting atomic breath, it shoots out an ice blast that actually freezes Kong's arm and gives him frostbite, which is the reason why he gets that crazy power glove gauntlet thing that Dan Stevens' as Trapper just happened to already have in stock. But back to the battles, they are all great. The initial battle that pits Kong and Godzilla against each other in Cairo, Egypt is great. And you can really see the scope and the scale of these Titans, especially when Kong is trying to run away from Godzilla's atomic breath and is running around the pyramids. And you can see just how grandiose Kong is 
against those pyramids. And whether it's in Cairo or Rio de Janeiro or France or Miami, Florida, Adam Wingard and his team has done such a great job of giving us the sense of scope and scale of these Titans. They did a really fantastic job of that. The other great thing this movie does are the facial expressions of our Titans. We have evolved enough in special effects and animation that a movie like Godzilla x Kong can exist. So the film is pretty much wordless when we are following Kong and he is hearing and feeling the signal and it takes him to a sinkhole that actually pushes him further into hollow earth. And we see as the audience feels Kong's curiosity, his fears and anxieties, when he's happy or satisfied. So I am really impressed and I do appreciate them really doing their best to make Kong a three-dimensional character. The same goes for Godzilla, whose facial expression goes from unbridled rage to a moment of clarity when another character appears and more on that in a little bit. But even the facial expressions of the Scar King, his mocking laugh at Kong, Everything that the special effects team does to give these expressions to these titans are just top notch. The human characters for the most part are audience avatars. Rebecca Hall returns as Dr. Eileen Andrews, the linguist, and she's really there to provide exposition and just kind of be the audience avatar. So Kaylee Hoddle as Gia, she is experiencing these signals. Same with Godzilla and Kong. And basically what is happening is there is a part of the Iwa tribe that everyone thought was extinct that actually lives in Hollow Earth. And they have been sending a psychic distress signal. And that is what Godzilla, Kong, and Gia are all experiencing. And this kind of goes twofold with the plot. One, it's used to expand the mythos of Hollow Earth, which I appreciate. But two, it also adds kind of a new wrinkle or a paper thin layer to the plot where Dr. Eileen Andrews thinks Gia is going to want to stay with this Iwa tribe and she's going to have to accept that. Even though she's kind of adopted her as her mother, she's kind of accepting the fact that Gia may want to stay with this tribe, even though... Um, and again, this is spoilers. That's not really the case. Gia wants to stay with uh, Dr. Eileen Andrews. She sees her as her surrogate mother. And that's really how things go. But this is just me. Just to make, you know, people think, oh, is Gia going to stay with this tribe? It's just for a little bit of conflict that really doesn't mean anything in the end. Speaking of Gia, Kaylee Hoddle was really good in this movie. Just like how I enjoyed her in Godzilla vs. Kong. Again, she realized that she is not the last of the Iwa tribe and there are sects of that tribe that live in Hollow Earth. Now, the connection that her and Kong had, it was really strong in Godzilla vs. Kong. That connection isn't there as much. They don't share as much screen time together as they did in the last movie. But I did enjoy her whole journey in realizing that she isn't the last of her tribe and the little bits of, you know, clarity that her and Dr. Eileen Andrews, Rebecca Hall would have in terms of their relationship together. So I really appreciated that. And again, I think Kaylee Hoddle is one of those actors to watch in the future. Brian Tyree Henry as Bernie Hayes, the podcaster, is taken along for the ride. And Dan Stevens is there as Trapper, the vet. They're really there for comic relief or in Dan Stevens' case to be comic relief and to look smoldering and be the Han Solo character of the group. So they're really nothing more than one-dimensional characters. Yeah, we discovered the Iwa tribe is living in Hollow Earth. It's one of those things where you push a stone and it starts out this irrigation system and it's a way for, you know, the civilized world to be able to discover the tribe. But it's really kind of cliche. But who cares about the human characters? This movie is about the Titans. And Adam Wingard has done such a fantastic job of making us care 
for these kaiju. And they really went balls to the walls creating these crazy fights. And it just reminds me, and I mentioned this in the non-spoiler review, but, but this reminds me of sort of the Showa era of the Godzilla movies. And that was from around 1954 to I think 1975. But it included movies like Destroy All Monsters and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. And these are the movies that I grew up loving as a kid. So this movie felt like Adam Wingard had his heart in the right place and really wanted to make a movie for the fans of Godzilla. And it is perfectly okay to love this and also love Godzilla minus one. It is okay to have both of these movies coexist. One of the things that I did ask for was more of an exploration of Hollow Earth. And I got that. We got to see more of the landscape. We got to see more of the creatures that are involved in Hollow Earth. And we even dive into the lore and the history and the mysteries of Hollow Earth. So these are all things that I asked for. We started this franchise out as a kaiju franchise that we went into sci-fi. Now we are in full bore mysticism. And to be perfectly honest, I feel that this franchise has been able to balance all of that pretty well. But here's where I guess this is where the biggest flaw of the movie comes for me. And that's really with the inclusion of Scar King as the main baddie. And to be perfectly honest, Scar King as a villain, it's kind of mid. He had a great design. I loved his swagger. I loved the spine whip. I loved him being an asshole and laughing at Kong and mocking him. But when it was pretty much discovered that he was controlling Shimu and it wasn't that Shimu was just like another asshole titan, the writing on the wall for Scar as a character was pretty obvious. But I will say this, I really did enjoy the turn of events when Shimu basically went Jason X on him froze his body and Kong basically shattered his body on the ground like it was a Mortal Kombat fatality. That was great. I might have rolled with this movie a little bit more if Shimu was the main villain because Shimu is one of the oldest titans and is sort of a, like I said, a negaverse version of Godzilla. I would have liked to see those two pit against each other, but instead we got this backstory that Godzilla essentially banished Scar King and his minions to Hollow Earth Hell. And Godzilla, you know, is charging himself up all through this movie, defeats Tiamat in the Arctic Circle and is charging himself up. So we are thinking that there's going to be this big, big battle that's going to be brewing between Godzilla, Kong, and Scar King. And honestly, the Scar King was not that big of a threat. I actually feel that Mecha Godzilla was a bigger threat in Godzilla versus Kong. Now, the major plot point that happens in this film is that Gia is the one that is able to reawake Mothra, and Mothra is the one that gets Godzilla and Kong together to team up against Scar King and Shimu. And Kong is trying to lure Godzilla down into Hollow Earth so Godzilla can see Scar King and attack Scar King. But it is Mothra that once she shows up, Godzilla is able to understand what is happening. Now I do have one question, and that is, what is the relationship between Mothra and Godzilla in this universe? I know canon-wise, Mothra is one of the more benevolent titans and aids Godzilla from time to time, but for this franchise, this sort of feels like an unanswered question, and I do want to dive more into that relationship. And I am also interested in whether or not Mothra is going to have her own fairies. Sorry, I just nerded out there. Uh, but honestly, Mothra's presentation, the special effects, the animation, all that stuff was top notch. One final observation, the most divisive character in this movie is Suko, the baby Kong. And there is a purpose for him to be in this movie, but yeah, he is there to look cute and to sell toys. So I understand that there may be some Godzilla purists that will not like this character, but I mean, Honestly, we did get through Son of Godzilla and, and everything like that, and we've gone through like Baby Godzilla. So we've played this game before in the past, but yeah, there's probably going to be some people that will be upset with the inclusion of this character. I can't really be mad at them, but I will say this, 
The moment that Kong uses Suko to beat up other apes, you'll be a little bit satisfied with that. Overall, Godzilla x Kong The New Empire gave me everything I asked for in this film. The kaiju battles were grand and ambitious. We got a great expansion of the Hollow Earth mythos. We also got some character development when it came to Kong and Godzilla. And even if the human characters for the most part were one dimensional, it was made up for by the evolution of Kong and Godzilla being pushed to the forefront as our true main characters, the scope of the Titan battles, and the introduction and reappearance of some of the most popular Titans. See this in IMAX. See this with the best sound. You will not be disappointed. I will be seeing this again. This movie is a blockbuster. Obviously. We are starting to get into the summer blockbuster season. It isn't April yet, but it is starting to feel like with Godzilla x Kong that the summer blockbuster movies are starting to become more and more frequent. And yeah, I loved the hell out of this movie. Just give me kaiju beating up other kaiju, you will always get my money. What did you think of Godzilla x Kong The New Empire? Share your thoughts, leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get notifications as well. Thanks a lot everyone, take care.